Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on March 1st, 2024 here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're going to go ahead and engage again in our daily lectionary texts and see what God has for us today and how we can um, maybe struggle through some of these today. I don't know. I haven't looked at them ahead of time. It's like, so you're going to get uh, raw, unadulterated... Uh, you know, first glance. So we'll go from there. We'll so figure it out. Uh, let me, yeah, we'll figure it out. Let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you for this day and the many blessings that you continue to provide for us. Thank you that your spirit does uh, dwell among us and in us and works through us to accomplish your purposes. And I pray, Lord, that we would hear from you today as we read your word and that our lives would be transformed by it. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting off today with Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me, a company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn saying that he has done it. In Psalm 148, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, 
wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. And our Hebrew scripture text today, and I didn't even stick a note in it. There we go. Is from Genesis chapter 43, verses 1 through 15. Now the famine was severe in the land, and when they had eaten up the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little more food. But Judah said to him, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly as to tell the man that you had another brother? They replied, The man questioned us carefully about ourselves and our kindred, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? What we told him was an answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, Bring your brother down? Then Judah said to his father Israel, Send the boy with me, and let us be on our way, so that we may live and not die, you and we and also our little ones. I myself will be surety for him. You can hold me accountable for him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. If we had not delayed, we would now have returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some bags of the choice fruits of the land in your bags and carry them down as a present to the man. A little balm and a little honey, gum, resin, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take double the money with you. Carry back with you the money that was returned on the top of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also and be on your way again to the man. May God Almighty grant you mercy before the man so that he may send back your other brother and Benjamin. As for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So the men took the present and they took double the money with them, as well as Benjamin. Then they went on their way down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. And turning over to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. Now, concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is well for a man not to touch a woman, but because of cases of sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a set time, to devote yourselves to prayer, and then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. This I say by way of concession, not of command. I wish that all were as, as myself am, but each has a particular gift from God, one having one kind and another a different kind. To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is well for them to remain unmarried as I am. But if they are not practicing self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to be aflame with passion. And our gospel text is from Mark chapter 4, uh, starting in verse 35 and going to the end of the chapter. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was asleep in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? 
Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And back to our psalm, Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works, glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually, remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he has uttered. O oh, offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and strangers in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Jacob. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham, and the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he had turned to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and lightning that flashed through their land. He struck their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke, and the locusts came, and young locusts without number. They devoured all of the vegetation in their land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck down all the firstborn in their land, the first issue of all their strength. Then he brought Israel out with silver and gold, and there was no one among their tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light by night. They asked, and he brought quails and gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river, for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. And our final psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits and I hope, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it seems like we were all over the place today. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, psalm 105, it's uh, such a lengthy psalm, but it... It's pretty inclusive. Yeah, yeah it recounts covers. kind of all of that uh, sort of Genesis and then Exodus story mm -hmm. um, on into Judges even. Um, 
yeah, uh, just a good, good reminder. Um, you know, regularly reminded that uh, you know the Psalms being uh, you know the hymn book of the of the Israelites. You know, they would sing these songs. They would remember their stories mm-hmm. through songs. How easy it is for us to remember uh, the lyrics of songs that. You know, secular songs, even songs right. that we listened to when we were in elementary school, we can still recite all the words. But uh, here, uh, Psalm 105, uh, uh, the history of, of the Hebrew people from the end of Genesis through uh, Exodus and on into um, Judges, even uh, good, good, good memory, yes. good to remember, right? Um, hmm. What if we jump back to Genesis real quick? Even that, uh, you know, that that really strange way that God was working good things for the people, even through difficult circumstances. And I guess um, it helps if you know remembering the full context. Obviously, uh, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery in Egypt. He's down there. He has the dreams. Uh, he hears all the uh, seven years of uh, plenty, plenty and, and then abundance and then seven years of famine and now Joseph is set over all of these things and now his brothers are coming to him and his brothers are actually bowing down to him and here's this story and I which fulfilled the dream which that fulfilled the made dream. them sell him into slavery right. because they were mad they were because mad. they were going to bow down Joseph to their was younger a little brother bit of a jerk. Right. he was all a little bit of a stuff, jerk right uh, and so I don't know what uh so Genesis 43, obviously the first time the brothers go down to Egypt, they don't bring Benjamin with them. And Joseph knows that these are his brothers, and they know that he's got another brother, Benjamin, at home, and now insists that Benjamin comes with them. Um, and here's Israel slash Jacob, who is hesitant to let Benjamin go because he thinks that Joseph's dead, and Benjamin would be the last son remaining of of Rachel only right. having had right. Joseph and Benjamin. The, the beloved, the favorite, yeah, if right, you will. Right. The, yeah, the favorite wife. Um, but I just kind of, you know, what I find interesting about this passage is here's here's Judah who basically puts himself on the line mm-hmm. that if we don't come back with Benjamin, let me be responsible. Mm-hmm. And uh, even that, you know, that verse 9, I myself will be surety for him. You can hold me accountable for him. You know, if I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. Um, and, you know, I don't know, just kind of how do we put it in context with the other stuff? Well, we know that ultimately Jesus descends from Judah. Mm-hmm. And so Judah in his previous stories told in Genesis was not always the most righteous of of, of, of brothers. Um, uh, Wasn't the most righteous of Jacob's sons, but, and and in fact, it was, uh, you know, Judah, who was originally the one that came up with the idea, I think of- Is he the one that wanted to sell? Okay, that's what I was going to, I was like, hold on, I'm going to look, because I think Yes, it was Joseph that was originally wanted to kill Joseph, and then decided, well, if we're not going to kill him, let's sell him into slavery kind of thing. So in a way, it's kind of a Judah redemption story. You know, okay, let me be responsible. And do you think there might have been some guilt there too? Because oh, if sure. he, I mean, he's like, well, I know that's why, because they don't realize that it's Joseph that's right. giving them these rations. They don't know who he is yet. Right. And uh, so maybe he's like, well, I, I did this to the other brother. I've got to protect this one. Right. Right. Oh, I think that's exactly what's going on. He's feeling guilt for it, um, and so he's making, yeah. So I've already cost my father one son. I'm not going to cost him a second. But that fact that he put himself on the line, right. I think, is um, in a way a foreshadow ultimately of what Jesus does for us, mm-hmm. that he becomes, um, he becomes our ransom. He becomes the one who puts himself on the line for us. Yes. Uh, and the weird thing is Judah was the one who was the disobedient one to begin with, and now he's having a little redemption, but Jesus himself was always perfect, right. and we were always at fault. Yet, yet Jesus goes even beyond this 
uh, Judah redemption mm -hmm. kind of thing and, mm -hmm. and does that which nobody else could do. do. Yeah, That's, it's just, it's, it's a great story. Too, too much to go into here today. So go back and read your Genesis, right? You know, read the <laughs> There's whole thing. There's, There's a lot in there. There's a lot in there. 105 is the cliff notes. Right, right, <laughs> right. Right, it really, yes. 105 is the cliff notes. Um, Kind of maybe not in the mood to talk about First Corinthians today. I know. Like, what you do never you do know what that? to do you with that. You never know what to do with that. Um, uh, a, I guess kind of a big thing, um, you know, obviously looking at the purpose, whenever you read anything from Paul's letters, always look back at what the whole purpose of the letter was to begin with and keep it in context with that. Mm -hmm. If Paul was writing to the Corinthians about unity in the church, it would make sense that better unity is practiced when everybody does things the right way, which we includes... We do it on a smaller scale, and then we extend right. out from the family. The family right. is kind of the prototype, I guess. I know that's not the right word I'm right. looking for, but no, that's where I'm at yeah, right now. That's, that's kind of the prototype. If we model our homes that way, then that we extend beyond right. our individual homes into the community. Um, right. And so if we do this well, then we can extend outside the bounds right. and care for one another. Right. Um, Absolutely. Obviously different relationships, but yet still care, respect for one another right. within the marriage, respect for one another outside of the home as well. Right. So. Absolutely. Right. And if, uh, if there is not order and unity within the family, right. then how do we expect there to be order and unity within the community? Right. And also, this just kind of makes sense. Everyone, you know, if you go back earlier, uh, earlier in chapter five and chapter six, Paul is just kind of laying out some basic stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. make sure you have appropriate boundaries in all of your community relationships. Right. And that's an important one. Great. Okay. Got it. Got it. But go back and read all of 1 Corinthians and keep it all in context. You know, right. don't just try to yank stuff out. Keep it all in context. What is Paul talking about? Unity in the community. And these are ways that unity is, is best practiced. And this, these pr protect that unity that is so important to Jesus. Right. Right. But you could talk back to, you know, we always try to find some type of link, if you will, back to the Genesis. Even in this redemption, mm -hmm. this is... Joseph is caring for community, which Pharaoh has put him in that place right. to be able to um, to provide and, and, and whatnot. But even the brothers and Judah caring for Benjamin. And so that's putting the relationships back mm -hmm. in order. Right. And ultimately right. then when Joseph reveals who he is and the relationships. Anyway, so just, yeah. you know. Well, you didn't take it back to Judah. Like, well, what were Judah's problems? Well, Judah didn't manage um, his intimate relationships as well as, as he, he should could have. <laughs> right. Right. Would it have so, been better yeah. if, and then Judah's sons and all the stuff, and anyway, yeah. So, if you do it the right way, it, it works things better. better. Yeah. Right. 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 Uh, yeah, and so the, the Jesus stilling the storm. Um, Goodness, like how does how does it uh, how does it relate? Obviously, the uh, the Psalms are giving us lots of um, descriptions of God's power and His authority mm -hmm. and all these kind of things. Um, but just identifying Himself again that He has authority over the wind and over the sea, um, and and the disciples are growing in their understanding of who he is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, could you imagine like you're, you're in one moment terrified that you're going to die in a storm and the next right. moment going, wait, like the God of the universe is in our boat. Right. Like I understand being afraid of the storm, but ha like it's a whole different kind of awe, as they say, um, a whole other different kind of awe. Maybe even like, right. what, what do we do with this? Right. And then whenever he says, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Are you like disappearing to the back of the classroom? So don't call on me. Like, I don't want to answer that. You know, <laughs> they've been with him. And do you still not have any faith? Sorry. Mm -hmm. You know. I... Well, it's like, no, no, Jesus. I was afraid of the storm. Right? right, that's natural, right? They're, you know, I, I think what's, uh, 
I get it, they're fishermen, but frequently they would stay near the shore. Right. You know, they, I'm sure they would trek across the sea occasionally and stuff, but they're mostly, they're mostly along the lines of close to the shore because that's usually where you know the fish are, right? right. But, um, but at the same time, you know, for the Hebrews, water and chaos and storms are, are always symbolic of. Uh, you know the primordial chaos at the beginning of creation you know mm -hmm. water is not necessarily um, you know Hebrews don't go swimming for fun you know kind of right. thing they uh, so being out in the middle of the storm stuff they're like oh it's this whole that it is the chaos what a worse you know what's the worst way to die right, right. you know get swamped in the storm drown at the bottom of the lake your family friends wouldn't know what you know what what right. happened all this and kind of stuff and they would have known, like, water has power. Right. You know, water, we, we know that. I mean, we look at, you know, um, canyons, and water can do amazing things. And they're not in that context, but they can see the damage mm -hmm. that water can do. And so there is power in that. Mm -hmm. And it's uncontrolled power. They right. can't, you know, we don't right. have that ability. Right. And so I that fear, yes, that would be their natural inclination. Water... Is powerful and right. uncontrollable, uncontrollable, and, chaotic. and so right. right, and so um, that fear would be yes. And Jesus is just asleep in the stern, and has authority over the wind and the sea. So uh, you know, um, looking at all of these things, even looking at why does Joseph remain faithful as he was a slave in Egypt? Well, he had confidence that God was going to work in his life you know right. he um you know god has you know the abraham isaac jacob you know the patriarchs joseph probably you know has interacted with them heard the stories all the kind of stuff right. um and joseph is thinking yeah god's god's in control god's got this you know the genesis story yeah he's messing with them a little bit he's playing with them a little bit he's going right. to get a little bit of a zinger in there a little bit but ultimately to, yeah ultimately they're going to do the reconciliation yeah. and that's great um but why why do any of us follow jesus why do any of us follow jesus well he he has the authority he knows what he's talking about. Right. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's the smartest guy in the room all the time. Right. And he gives us the capacity to make choices that affect our lives. Right. And when we choose to do the things that he's called us to do, generally speaking, things work better for us. Right. And, and, and ultimately, when we are confronted with challenges, we know that God is working through those challenges as well. Mm -hmm. So it's in the good and it's in the bad because we know that God is always good. Right. And, and we know that he always has the authority um, and wants what's best for us. And so uh, why do we follow him? Because, because he is God. Even when we don't, even when we don't respond faithfully, we still follow him because he is God, and that's and there's the thing, you right. know. It's like yeah. So all the, all back to the Psalms and all that stuff, you know. I mess up. I make mistakes. I sin intentionally. Um, yet God still acts in a loving and a compassionate and a, a peaceful and a patient way. And our, he is faithful. Yeah, and to he us. is faithful. And I us. and I think that gives us comfort when you look at um, even the, you know Abraham and Isaac and and um, the the Moses and the, all of those things. And then here we have the disciples that have been with him, and he's been speaking in the parables, and so he's been revealing. And so it's like they get it. There's a little grasp, but they still screw it up. Mm -hmm. And then we look at those patriarchs, and they screw it up. And yet God continues in that goodness and in that faithfulness to us that we don't, we're not cast aside, that he is the constant there. Mm -hmm. And so even when we do mess up, we choose to be disobedient or maybe we don't choose. Maybe we just find ourselves in a difficult situation and all of a sudden you look around and you're like, okay, this has got to go back to God. This is above my ability here. The thing is, is he is good, he is faithful, he is always steadfast in that. Mm -hmm. And we're not alone in those 
and those doubts are those fears. Uh, we aren't alone in that. And the disciples themselves, I mean, they were in the presence of Jesus and they still messed up. I'm always like, that makes me feel a little better sometimes. Right. right. And so, but that there's comfort in that. There's right. comfort in that. And there's um, realization that that is how good mm. God is. Um, he reveals that in his response to us. Right. Even in our doubts and fear and disobedience even. Right. So. Psalm 148, verse 7. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Right? Even the depth of the Sea of Galilee right. praises, praises God. Okay. Right. Right? All of creation, right? All of creation. All of creation. His name alone is exalted. His yep. glory is above Amen. earth and heaven. Amen. Okay. So, all right. I, I think that's that's a wrap. Uh, yeah, that's a wrap. <laughs> All right, I'll close this over Excellent. here. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for your words to us today. Thank you for your steadfast love for us. Thank you for the faithfulness that you give to us. Help us when we find ourselves in, um, in the boats of life and afraid and uh, not understanding. And hear us when we cry out to you and hold us close. Praise to you. All praises and glory to you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. We'll look forward to the next time we get together. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.